Do you enjoy the speed dating of talking to like a million journalists in one day? Uh, not the speed dating, no. Because, because uh, I then start thinking, how do I reduce this into the right format and, and also be accurate and fair and stuff like that? It's, it's easier if it's a more relaxed, extended chat for sure. Yeah, I, I'm on the same page with you. Yeah. So, I, listen, I have a million questions for you, but I have to start with the most important, which is you know I'm a big fan of your work. I read that you're not going to direct anymore. I've decided. I, I never said that. See, but that, see, I, I just didn't like, like. I think this is from a piece in the Guardian, right? I, yeah, it, it was all over the place. Where yeah, every, but, but it, it was from an interview in the Guardian, right? And in an interview in the Guardian, I said, "I'm I'm not going to direct for the foreseeable future." That's that's really not the same. Like retire. I, I, how that statement leads to the way it's being presented is, I think, part of the weirdness of existence at the moment. And how words and meaning of words gets drifted away and some other kind of response or meaning floats in. And what I said was, I'm not going to direct for the foreseeable future, which is true. I'm working as a screenwriter. I'm writing for Danny Boyle. Sure. I'm trying to help, uh, certainly going to do everything I can to work with this guy, Ray Mendoza, who I work with on Civil War. I've got... It, Filmmaking does not only include directing. There's other roles uh, one can do. One of them is screenwriting, and I am a screenwriter, so I'm doing that. Yeah. Um, first of all, I love your screenwriting. So, I, and I knew you were going to be doing that. Right. So, it, um, but so basically, you're saying to your fans that at some point down the road, you will probably make another movie. No, I'm. I, I'm it's an open-ended question. Sure. The thing I'm. What I'm. What I'm doing at the moment is. Uh, I, I've worked in film for a long time in different capacities, including as a screenwriter for other directors. And right now, there's a director who's an old colleague of mine, Danny Boyle, who I'm working on a project with him. And that is a, that's a big job that requires a lot of thought and effort and work. Um, plus a film where I'm working with a guy uh, called Ray Mendoza to tell his story and to to work with him to make a film really from his perspective and with his agenda. And that's my job at the moment. So I'm doing my job. Um, it doesn't have any grandiose statements I, attached to it. I didn't mean it in a grandiose way. And I'm not actually, I hope, a very grandiose person. I'm just, I'm just doing my job. I totally understand. Yeah. So you know that I'm fascinated. We've talked about this. I'm fascinated by the editing process mm -hmm. because no matter what you've done on set, no matter what you've written, it that is the final place it all comes together. True. So with Civil War, how did the film possibly change in the editing room in ways you didn't expect going in? In my experience, it always changes in the editing room. And I think that maybe this is me talking as a writer because I think fundamentally that is what I am as a writer is um, uh, editing is, the f is not just the final part of writing. It is, in, in a sense, the bit of film making. Uh, the thing you see on the screen, you've got a, you've got a stack of stuff. There'll be uh, dialogue, performance, uh, production design, music, sound design, fra everything, the imagery, all of it. That's the bit that comes together in the edit. The shoot, in a funny way, which I think often looks from the outside like the filmmaking, is in a way getting the raw material together for the edit. It's, it's, it's creating the stuff that you will be, like the jigsaw pieces that you will be slotting together. Um, a jigsaw is not the pieces, it's the pieces put together. So, so it's something like that. I mean, it's, more complicated, but also it isn't. Sure, but I am, I'm always so curious because, um, like, who did you show the film, like friends and family, or who did you show the film early to that they saw it and, and maybe they gave you feedback, like, how did their reaction possibly change the film or not change the film? Um, uh, I think possibly because of the way I conceptualize filmmaking and, and actually the role of a director as being part of a group of people making a film you show it to people often within the group so uh always in post-production there's visual effects supervisors and editors and 
composers who are all reacting to the film in its cuts as you go. Uh, or, or that I'd also include, then I'd bring people in who aren't normally in post-production, which like the DOP, for example, um, uh, the colorist, the grader, Asa, I've worked with on every film, uh, Glenn, the sound designer, I really want to know what they think. And then as well as that, sometimes old colleagues or friends. Um, uh, I, I work with Danny Boyle a lot at the beginning of my filmmaking life. And then, uh, you know, in theory, again, we're just about to do it again. Uh, I showed it to Danny and said, any thoughts? Because he's a super experienced director and he has an insight that um, in many ways will be better than my own, uh, if only because I'm too close to sure. the trees, but also just anyway. So, so yes, I, th that's what I do. Um, uh, and then I listen carefully because you lose, I lose objectivity. And I'm working on instinct a lot of the time. You think something lands in a certain way, but then you find it doesn't. And it's, it's complicated, but it's that. My last question for you, mm. even though I have about a thousand others. So uh, you have some really intense action in this, but you are making like it's uh, what is the secret to making a, a war movie that's an anti-war movie? I, I'm not sure I know the secret, but we certainly attempted to make an anti-war movie. Uh, it, it's a lot of stuff. Uh, it's how music is used, how something is framed, actually how it's cut. Um, is a huge, huge part of that. Um, but it's also in the presentation and the choreography of the action itself. And so it depends where you're drawing your grammar from. Um, so film has a grammar of combat um, that it's developed in complicated ways over the years. And what we did was was our grammar was largely taken from things like news footage or documentaries or lived experience. So uh, um, amongst the filmmakers, uh, like um, a, a very good example was the guy I'm about to work with again, Ray Mendoza, who uh, is a veteran and um, uh, uh, was given a lot of autonomy in terms of how some things were put together and the realism will come partly from people like Ray. Yeah, uh, he did a great job. He um, really did. And uh, listen, really did. Congr congrats on this movie. I really mean it sincerely. I already got to go. And uh, I wish you nothing but the best.